It was an old, upright piano. Very old, very out of tune. I touched it, and that was it. I mean, I touched it, we fell in love, this instrument and I, and uh, that was the beginning of my love affair with music. The big problem, of course, was having graduated Harvard, what do I do now? And it had never occurred to me to even think remotely of being a conductor, that that was far too glamorous an idea. I knew I was a musician. I knew I loved to play the piano and write music. But here I was, a Harvard graduate, going to the big city of New York, from the provinces of Massachusetts, uh, to find a job, which I did not succeed in finding that summer of 1939, and I was very depressed. In that very summer, your country went to war owing to Hitler's having walked into Poland, and that was September 1st, 1939, a date I shall never forget. And I thought, well, the world is ending, and I can't find a job. Three bars before H, please. Short, sharp chord. Suddenly, by a great miracle, when I was at the nadir of depression and ready to chuck the whole thing, I was appointed assistant conductor of the New York Philharmonic Orchestra. There was a very mysterious aspect to Rajinsky's engaging me to be his assistant conductor at the Philharmonic, because that was a man I'd never met. He'd never met me. He called me over to where he lived and said, uh, I've just been offered the New York Philharmonic. I'm starting my first season and I need an assistant conductor and I've been through the whole list of all the available young conductors and I cannot make up my mind. So I finally asked God and God said, take Bernstein. <laughs> <laughs> what better agent could one have? And it meant that I had to be ready to take over in case Artur Rodzinski was or any guest conductor, got sick. This was the year of miracles. The first miracle was that the first guest conductor of that season at the New York Philharmonic did get sick. And I was informed of this on a Sunday morning at nine o'clock, having been up all night at a party celebrating <laughs> a, another event where work of mine, a minor work of mine had been performed I was in no shape to receive this nine o'clock jangling call and saying, okay, Lenny boy, this is it, you're on at three. Hmm. And I said, what are you talking about? Bruno Walter is ill and cannot conduct the concert at three o'clock. Now this was Sunday afternoon at three, which was a nationwide broadcast. Uh, it was the time anybody interested in serious music turned on the radio and heard the New York Philharmonic at three. A young conductor then was considered young when he was in his 40s. Nobody had ever heard of a 25-year-old conductor. No. The next thing I remember is a standing ovation, screaming Carnegie Hall. It had been broadcast, therefore it was a nationwide event. And for reasons still unknown to me, uh, the review of it appeared on page one of the New York Times the next morning, along with all this war news. And in the middle of all that was this incredible story, and I was suddenly thrust into international fame. Okay, now that you've all suffered through that, and now that you know the truth about... I'm serious. Did you ask if I was serious? Oh, am I? See, you it should just, hear it. It just feels impossible. It's not. It's not. Now let's go from 50, please. 
One, two, three. That was some year. It got me to think rather than being insufferable. I think it turned me the other way. I think it taught me humility in a strange way because I began to think there are no accidents. Here I've been looking for a job, treading the streets of New York looking for a job for years and not finding one or finding only miserable little things. And suddenly everything changed. It's as though the stars had changed. It made one believe in a divine guidance or providence or... I was quite humbled by that. I became a promiscuous musician, and I'm very proud of that word. Not promiscuous, but, but musician. <laughs> and when I have to fill out an entry at customs or immigration or something, and it says profession, I don't write uh, chef d'orchestre or conductor or whatever. I write musician, and I'm very proud of it. Well, there is our ideal conductor, almost. For perhaps the chief requirement of all is that he be humble before the composer, that he never interpose himself between the music and the audience, and that all his efforts, however strenuous or glamorous they may be, be made in the service of the music itself, which after all is the whole reason for the conductor's existence.